Hi, everybody. Welcome into Sports Talk Chicago. My name is John Zaglou, and great to have you here on Channel 59.3 B-Pod TV and Roku. Big news for the Cubs today. Turns out Wilson Contreras may not return. There are possible problems in negotiating a contract extension. We'll break it all down in just a second. Before we get started, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports and on Facebook at John Zaglou. If you want to watch more of this show, search up Sports Talk Chicago on YouTube or go to sportstalkchicago.com. If you want to watch other shows from the BPOD TV network, search up BPOD TV on YouTube. I want to start today with this. When you approach contract negotiations or extensions, the main key is having leverage. You have to have leverage in order to get what you want. That's a life lesson. It doesn't only apply to sports. It applies to any job. I'm not going to go up to my boss and say, hey, my sales went down 10% last year, boss. Can I get a raise? Can I get an extension? Is my job safe? (laughs) Doesn't work that way. We all know that, too. You're going to be at the top of your game in order to even demand or ask for a raise or extension. Your numbers have to be through the roof to ask for something like that to justify it, and to get what you want. If my sales were down 10% and I asked for a raise, I'd be laughed at, probably potentially fired, even. You have to make sure your numbers correspond to what you're asking for. Because if they don't, you're not getting it. Sorry. And the same could be said for Wilson Contreras and the Cubs right now. I'm not saying Wilson Contreras is a bad catcher or means nothing to the Cubs. In fact, he's the only reason I would go to a Cubs game now, besides maybe Marcus Stroman if he pitches. They're the last two superstars the Cubs have today. So Wilson Contreras isn't necessarily unfounded in what he wants. If he wants an extension, so be it. He's allowed to ask for one. But I do want to say this. A 259 career batting average, not playing full seasons ever in his career, really, always getting hurt, and seeing where the Cubs are as an organization does not justify giving Wilson Contreras an extension. I know a lot of Cubs fans are going to be gasping, why? What do you mean? Well, look at this team, number one. Cubs are in the midst of a rebuild. There is no doubt about it. I don't care if they call it a retool. I don't care if they say we're building on the fly. The fact is, they just had a fire sale last July, August, which I applauded. It was great to get rid of these old guys. Now you didn't have to pay them anything, and you have a lot of money left on the books, and you're not investing in aging talent that really isn't productive anymore, not as productive as it once was. I hate to say it, but Wilson Contreras is a part of that pull. Last year, 237 average, 21 home runs, 57 RBIs in 128 games. Okay, for a catcher, that's fine. But is that worthy of a five-year, six-year extension for a lot of money, relatively, on a Cubs team that doesn't know their own direction, that doesn't know their own plan? Just talked to David Sampson last week. Former Marlins president, he said the same thing. What's the plan? Have they stuck to it? No, they have not. So can you justify paying out a guy hitting 237, 100 plus million dollars? No, sorry. Really doesn't make any sense. I know fans want to hear the opposite fans. Oh, please keep them. Please keep Brian Rizzo and Bias. Keep them with me. I need something to watch. World Series team! Calm down. Look, if you want another World Series, don't pay Wilson Contreras. And that's not a knock on him. For everybody comes after me, that's not a knock on him. The situation does not adhere to paying him. Sorry. If you as a Cubs fan want the fastest route to a World Series, do not pay Wilson Contreras. has nothing to do with talent, per se. It has to do with money. It has to do with the direction of the organization. 
does not make sense to pay Wilson Contreras hundred plus million dollars to be a catcher when you have a top prospect coming up. I don't care if he had Tommy John surgery. I'd rather take some time with him knowing you have other prospects coming up too. This is going to be a new core, a new team, a new contender, a new look. The Cubs did everything right last year despite what everybody wants to say they did. Sorry. Not going to pay Javier Baez what he got in Detroit. Yeah, We all have to agree that was stupid. And Detroit made a horrible investment. Look at Anthony Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo would have been fine to bring back for a budget deal. He didn't want to do it. He picked a budget deal with a different team instead. And Chris Bryant got paid handsomely to hit 270. No thanks. I'm not here defending the Ricketts either. They've made some questionable decisions, to say the least, since they took over the Cubs. But what they did last year, as painful as it was for fans, it was smart. Sorry, it was. None of these guys were going to do anything of significance with the Cubs moving forward. Cubs have a lot of prospects. Brennan Davis, and now we see a report, too, about Wilson Contreras, telling a Cubs top prospect, Miguel Amaya, supposed to be this big catcher coming up, be ready. Wilson Contreras told him, be ready to be the future Cubs catcher. Wilson Contreras knows where this is going. He knows how this will end. The Yankees and Padres both checked in with the Cubs on Wilson Contreras, too, before the lockout. I have a feeling by July, early August, he will be moved. Smartly, too. There's going to be outrage. There's going to be disappointment. There's going to be yelling and fist-waving at the Ricketts for doing it and Jed Hoyer. But the Cubs will get a haul back. They won't have to spend any money on him because I'm not going to pay a 237 hitter. And on top of it, you have a replacement. you got a great replacement, top prospect waiting just to come up and play and to be your guy. Give him a shot. Wanted to talk about this for a number of weeks, but obviously the Bears were big news. Finally, I get to, please, think about this rationally, not as a fan. If you're clamoring for the Cubs to make it again to the World Series, trade Wilson Contreras. That simple. Trade him. He'll get back a hold. You won't have to pay him any money, and you have a replacement waiting in the wings. Contreras told him, be ready. Be ready to replace me. It is not wise to pay Wilson Contreras, a guy who has been hurt a number of times, and it's 237, 240, doesn't matter. You got a younger replacement who's going to play with this new core that's to come. The Cubs have done this right so far, the rebuild, despite what everybody wants to say. They have. They have a lot of top prospects waiting. Let Amaya come up and be the new catcher. Do not pay Wilson Contreras when you don't have to. You don't have to do it. you got a replacement. If the goal is a World Series, I don't see why paying Wilson Contreras a bloated contract for a long time is going to help. You already made the painful but yet necessary decision to cut ties with Bryant, Baez, and Brizzo. Do it with Contreras, too. This year, trade deadline. Hey, if the Yankees and the Padres already checked in, do it. Please do it. You'll get back a haul, you won't pay him a penny, and you have a replacement. Might not be what you want to hear, but the fact is, this is the best move for the Cubs' future. If you want a World Series in the next, I don't know, 10 years or sooner, then these decisions have to be made. Look, in the moment, Bryant, Baez, Rizzo being traded, not popular. But look at where the Cubs stand today, and look at what happened to those guys in free agency. The Cubs did not have to pay a penny for any of them. They got back tons of prospects, and in two years, three years at most, the Cubs are going to be good again with a whole new core, a young core that's controllable when it comes to money, and that's successful. They will be successful. May not have been popular, but it worked. Same with this. May not be popular to suggest that Wilson Contreras should be traded, but... In the long run, it is smart to do, especially when his value is high. You know, last year he was hurt and didn't hit well, had a tough season. They couldn't trade him. Waited till the offseason, had some 
suitors. Then the lockout happened. They couldn't trade him again. The Cubs have had two opportunities to already deal Contreras. They haven't been able to due to poor performance, injuries, and the lockout. This is your golden opportunity. If Contreras could start off the season hot, you have a great trade piece with lots of value on the MLB, it would be a smart decision. That's all I'm saying. This is not meant to hate on Wilson Contreras or even hate on the Cubs. In fact, I want them to succeed. And what they have to do is change. They have to change. This model is not going to work. And fortunately, to their credit, to Jen Hoyer's credit and the Ricketts family, they saw it last year and they knew. They had to cut ties with Bryant, Byers, and Rizzo. As tough as it was, they made great decisions. Here's the kicker, too. All their contracts combined ended up being less than what the Cubs offered them. The Cubs offered Javier Baez a $200 million extension to Bryant, too. They didn't take it. And now look it up. That's their fault for being too greedy when they sucked. And their performance is dwindled. And they put the Cubs in this position. Again, not here to defend the Ricketts, but let's talk about the real story before we judge, hey, the Ricketts suck, and oh, they traded away everybody, they ran this team into the ground. Oh, well, hold on a second. Hold on. Those guys didn't perform. And Contreras hitting 237 made him non-tradable. Or less tradable. Then he got hurt. If Wilson Contreras starts off this season hot, if he's hitting 300, playing good defense, and playing every game, more importantly, you better trade him before his value diminishes. Last year, I won't forget this. In May, Chris Bryant was hitting like 400, like 330, 340. He was doing great. Cubs didn't trade him. I said, why? Why didn't you do it? You could have had great value. There were tons of rumors the White Sox were interested. They didn't do it. And they traded him in July when his performance tailed off. They could have gotten more back had they done it in May. This is like the stock market. By low, sell high. Cubs drafted Contreras. He's a prospect. Farmhand. He was grown. They bought low. Sell high. If Wilson Contreras starts this season hitting 300, hit the ball well. And this team's going nowhere. We already know that now. There's no need to test or see. This team sucks. Trade him. I don't care how many Cubs fans get pissed at this. It's the truth. You have to. You have to. If you were Jed Hoyer, what are you looking for? Are you looking to compete this year with this sort of team and this roster? Or in two or three years with a brand new controllable, when it comes to money, core? That could be productive, even more productive than the original core. I'd rather do that. I'd rather put all my marbles in that basket than sit here and mess around and pay Wilson Contreras six years, $100 million, or whatever it might be, Ridiculous. Not necessary when you have another guy waiting in the wings who's supposed to be even better, potentially, according to scouts. I've said it already, and I'll say it again. If you want the Cubs to win a World Series in the next 5-10 years, you trade Wilson Contreras. Yes, you do. It's not about performance. It's not about, oh, he means so much to me in my heart. It's about the future. If you trade Contreras now when there are suitors, when there's interest, you get a ton of prospects back and you don't pay him. And you have a replacement. Amaya is supposed to be great. This is the way you do it. They did it last year. I didn't see anybody have second thoughts in the end about Bryant, Baez, and Brizzo. Might have hurt in the beginning. Everybody might have hated the Ricketts, but you know what? It worked. It did work. Hey, Cubs have a lot of prospects now. Come two years from today, they're going to be great. It worked. Might have been tough, but it worked. Do the same here. Have a viable replacement. Contreras is often injured, yes. Trade him when his value's high. Don't make the mistake they made last year with Chris Bryant. Waiting till his production dropped, till the trade deadline. Oh, okay, we'll trade him now. Could have gotten 10 times more back if you traded him in May.
I know everybody wants Contreras to be a cub for life because they got rid of everybody else and you're hanging out to the scraps of 2016. Let go. That's the message. Let go of 2016. Okay, because the fact is the Cubs are pretty far from a World Series right now. They're not there yet. Let go of the scraps. Stop worrying about the 2016 team and, oh, what a great team. Oh, history. Guess what? They're going to be ancient history before the Cubs win again unless they do something. And here's their chance to do it. Don't let them be ancient history. Come on. The Cubs are better than that. I know they're better than that. And that's why even though fans don't like it or don't want to talk about it or are going to come after me for this, it's the right business decision. So let's say they didn't trade everybody last year. The Cubs would be again delayed even further from a World Series. They'd keep those guys around and wait another year. They did the right thing. But I've been painful. They did the right thing. Objectively, you cannot argue with me on that. All of them sucked. Not going to pay Anthony Rizzo big money to hit 250. Not going to pay Chris Bryant big money to hit 20 home runs and hit 270. And I'm surely not going to pay Javier Baez to strike out 200 times a season guaranteed. Guaranteed. Sorry. And I'm not going to pay Wilson Contreras big money to hit 237, be often injured, and when I have a prospect waiting who could be better, even better. This is common sense. And it makes no sense to me. That's why everybody's wondering, when will he be extended? Please extend him. The Cubs, you guys suck. Tom Rickett sucks. John Hoyer, no. No. If you want the Cubs to win a World Series today, you will hope that they trade Wilson Contreras. Making this move will make them closer to a World Series. And that's just a fact. It will. They'll get more prospects back. They won't have to pay him. They'll have a different team in two or three years that's going to be controllable and young and productive. And they'll have a fire to win. Unlike what happened here in Chicago over the past couple of years. They won. They got lazy. Complacent. Everybody got fired in the end. Already extended David Ross, which is a horrible move, but that's for another day. I'm fine with the manager, at least, but don't keep around the players who are not going to produce. Bring in somebody. Bring in prospects. Do the rebuild the right way. You know, in the beginning, the Cubs had leeway from fans. I get it now. It's completely gone. The bridge is burned. But, hey, the Cubs didn't care what fans said. They waited. They sucked for three, four years, and they won the World Series. Do it again. Oh, wait. I know some Cubs fans won't because they're on the bandwagon. They don't want to wait. and They're used to this team winning because they don't remember Cubs history. And I might be 22, but I know Cubs history. I know how long they've sucked for. Only really since 2000. Have they made the playoffs regularly? 2003, 07, 08, 15, 16, 17, 20. Before, you and far between. 98, 84, then what? 45? They're not a winning team, historically. I know it's hard for bandwagons to understand that, but that's the truth. If you know your history, you know what this team's all about. So what you've been given over the past five, six years, it's unprecedented. I can't even believe it when I think about it. And I look back at the history books and the records and what they've done. It, it was great. It was great. I celebrate it. But now it's time for a change. If you want more of 2015 to 2020, then you have to be willing to wait and accept 2013, 2014 again for a couple of years. That way you can get back to 2015. Get back to that production, that winning culture. Everybody forgets. Everybody forgets about this team and what they've been through. And it's just, it's annoying sometimes. I'm sorry, it is. Frankly, it's annoying. 
you should know about your team. If you know, if you're a fan, you should know. A lot of people on this channel, when I talk about Bears, they talk about storied history, and that's great. Cubs fans should be the same way. Real fans know the history of this team. They should be happy with what they've done from 2015 to 2020, and guess what? They could be there in two years if they do things the right way today. They did last year. They did last year a great job. Do it again now. Do not bring back Wilson Contreras. Do not commit that much money in that many years to a guy who gets hurt and hits 237 when you have a replacement, and on top of it, you need youth. You need to be better. You need to rebuild. You, you are rebuilding. It's a passionate topic for me. It was last summer when I talked about the Cubs trading everybody. So I would hope they do this thing the right way. If they don't, I'm going to come after them. But you know what? At the end of the day, if fans are going to be happy with Contreras sticking around, that's fine. You will see how big of a mistake it'll be in three years. Look at the Jason Hayward contract. Come on. Oh, hey, rally the troops in 2016. Well, you know what? Ever since the rallying of the troops, look at his numbers. That's probably one of the worst signings of the Theo Epstein and Jed Hoyer era, period. That and Edwin Jackson. <laughs> Don't do it again. You know better. You guys are professionals. They know. Don't do it. If you have teams calling you about Wilson Contreras, trade him. You'll get back so much. And you'll look so much better in the future. Don't cave into public sentiment. Don't worry necessarily about butts in seats. Worry about actually winning. If you're committed to winning, if you're committed to another World Series, if you're committed to a real change, do not, and I repeat, do not re-sign or extend Wilson Contreras. Thanks for watching today's show here at Beepon TV, channel 59.3 in Roku. Really appreciate the time. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports and on Facebook, John Z Cluel. You can watch more of this show. Search up Sports Talk Chicago on YouTube or go to sportstalkchicago.com. Tune in right here every night at 1030 on Beepon TV. So long, everyone.